Big Fat Man Scoop, Brooklyn Clan. What's up, y'all? This is Fat Man Scoop. And right now, you're watching the Sensei, the number one, the king, my dude, Big Brando. He taught me, personally, me, Fat Man Scoop. All you gotta do is keep your mouth closed and your ears open. Listen to the man talk. That's knowledge personified right there. And I wouldn't trust nobody else but my dude, Big Brando. And I said it. Batman school, Big Brando. Let's go. What's happening, everybody? Boy, Big Brando. And today, let's talk about pressing t-shirts live at an event. In my last few videos, people asked in the comments if I've ever brought my heat press to a live event and pressed and sold shirts. What do I think about that method? And is it a profitable situation? Now, to answer this in short, yes, I have done it in the past. Do I do it often? No, I do not. Is it a smart and profitable way of making some money? Yeah but there are some limitations. So I'll try to touch base on a few of those issues now. So first thing you're gonna wanna think about is how are you gonna power up your heat press? When you're out vending at a festival, fair, concert, wherever you're operating out of, you have to have power to your booth. Not every single vendor booth comes with power. There are some that do, but this is something you would have to work out with the host of the event to figure out if you're gonna get power to your booth. Sometimes you gotta pay a little extra for it. Sometimes they might offer you a generator. Sometimes they might put you on a row of booths that everybody shares the same power strip. It just all depends. So if you are planning on doing this, make sure you could get power to your booth. Also, it would help to be upfront with the event host and let them know what you're powering up. Your heat press sucks in a lot of energy. I don't know if you've done this before, but I have when I used to press out of my kitchen. If I'm running the microwave, I could not run my heat press at the same exact time. If I'm using my heat press, I couldn't use a blow dryer at the same exact time. If the toaster was going on, I couldn't power up the heat press at the same exact time. These things suck up a lot of energy, and if they're on the same circuit, It'll blow everything out. So depending on who your neighbors are at this event, you have to be upfront and say, hey, I'm powering up a heat press for your awareness. Cause if you're next to a food booth or somebody else is using a lot of electricity and a lot of energy also, you might run into some issues. Now, outside of that, bringing plastisol transfers is a very, very good thing to have if you're pressing live on site. Some people use their vinyl cutter also live on site, but also that's gonna take a lot of energy also. You're gonna need to power up your computer, power up your vinyl cutter, and power up the heat press. It's also worth noting that you wanna keep your heat press powered on majority of the show because you wanna be able to bang out shirts as customers are coming in. Cause I don't know if customers gonna wanna wait 20 minutes for your heat press to heat up and then you press their shirt on for them. So you run into some of those issues. Now I know a lot of you guys are thinking, I don't wanna pre-press a bunch of t-shirts, bring them to this festival and then I'm not gonna be able to sell any. So I'll just wanna bring my heat press to the show with blank t-shirts and transfers and make the shirts as people order them so I don't have any wasted inventory. 100%, this is a good train of thought and this is a very, very responsible way of thinking. So if you were thinking about doing this, it's worth a shot. I've tried it before and it worked, but like I said, this isn't something that I do all the time. I haven't did it in years. So first, let me explain to you on how it worked for myself. So if you are thinking about structuring your business this way, maybe these tips could help you out. But when I have pressed live at a show or an event was at a sports function. The sweet spot for myself was bringing pre-made transfers to soccer games, basketball games, baseball games. Powered up my heat press next to the concession stand. And all I did was take the team's colors in the t-shirts and then press the kids' numbers onto the t-shirts. So I had pre-made every single number you could think of in white. Then I kept blue shirts, yellow shirts, red shirts, green shirts on hand, adult sizes only. And before the game started, if I seen it was a red team versus a yellow team, I would pull those two t-shirts and then pitch my service to the family members that were coming to watch the games moms, dads, uncles, aunts, grandparents. If you wanted to show your support for the kid that you're coming to watch, I could put his number on your t-shirt to show that support live in the stands. Very, very profitable. I just ganged up a bunch of numbers on a plastisol transfer sheet, pre-cut all the numbers out, and as they came up, they said, all right, my kid's number 11. Boom, I grabbed two number ones, put them on the shirt, bang, press it down on the respected color t-shirt. This is where I made the most money doing this. Prior to doing this, I used to bring my vinyl cutter out there with the heat press 
and then I would cut out shirts that said like go Brian and put the number on the t-shirt. This worked but it was very time consuming and I knew I was losing out on a lot of money because people were waiting for me to cut out the vinyl with whatever they wanted then I had to weed it up then I had to press it on the shirt. Very time consuming and that led to people coming up to the booth seeing that I was busy and then walking away. I still made money but not as much money as bringing pre-cut transfers already ready to go simplifying my method by just offering the numbers in the respected colors of the teams that were playing that day. This is something you have to work out with the league and the people that are running the concession stand, all of that stuff. This is where I made majority of my money. This is how it worked for myself. Another way that I've seen other people make money doing this, this is me just watching somebody else make a bunch of money was at the swap meet. There's two ladies that were selling baby onesies and bibs and that that was it and they had pre-made transfers with all of these cool sayings on the bibs and on the onesies they had a small heat press and they were just pressing transfers down on the onesies and bibs and i seen that i said damn that is a genius idea so that's how i seen them make money so if you're thinking about doing this i would say try to simplify your process as best as possible only bring the transfers that you know will sell don't give them a million different options and don't bring a million different color t-shirts. I would say only bring the stuff that you know is gonna sell like the very popular design so you could press those on and get them out the door. And if you wanted to use this method, I would suggest testing it out, see what works for you. It took me a few different tries to figure out where my sweet spot was and where to make money at by simplifying my whole operation. But there's a ton of money in the custom apparel business if you're pressing live at an event, especially a sports event, because you're not making t-shirts for the kids, you're selling it to the parents, to the uncle, to the aunt, to the grandparents, to the people supporting the kids playing the sports. Once again, this is years ago, so they might already have somebody on hand at some of these little league games, some of these Pop Warner games or whatever you're going to, there already might be somebody doing this. So if you wanted to get this kind of business, you would have to go to whoever is hosting or operating the whole league and finding out if it's okay, or maybe they might charge you a little bit of money, or maybe you might have to donate some stuff to the league. Who knows however it works out, but this is how I made a bunch of money. Now, some of the downfalls is bringing a bunch of different options. If somebody's gonna stand at your booth and they're reading all the t-shirts that you have hanging up in your booth and every single t-shirt saying slogan design can get very overwhelming where they're just like man there's too much to choose from and then just keep it moving i would try to simplify things and only bring a small amount of designs that's manageable for yourself but i would try to bring your most popular designs out so if you're already selling on etsy or your own website you have a good idea on what the popular designs are that people are buying those are the ones that i would bring to the event to press live for the people and then on top of that it would be using the same data that you have from your etsy or your online store to find out what t-shirts people are buying and what colors people are buying and then that's the stuff that you bring to the event there's nothing worse than going to an event with you know 15 16 different totes of different t-shirts and cuts and colors and sizes and not selling anything. It's a lot of work just to do that. So simplify the process, make it a lot easier on yourself, and you should be good to go. Make sure you got power to your booth also. That's the biggest thing. Or get your own generator, but you're gonna wanna have power to your booth to power up the heat press. As far as what sizes you should bring, what color t-shirts you should bring, all of that stuff is gonna be based on whatever your research tells you. What's the popular sizes, popular colors for your audience already, what the foot traffic is probably gonna be like at these events, and what you wanna spend money on to bring to this show. Cause you gotta buy the blank t-shirts, you gotta buy the transfers, you gotta buy the vinyl if you're using vinyl. Do a lot of research to make better, smarter decisions before you show up, all right? Hopefully this helps somebody out out there. If you're thinking about doing the same exact method, it's worth the shot. You'll never know unless you try. And if it doesn't work out for you, hey, you know it's not a thing for you because lugging around 50, 70 pound press and totes of blank t-shirts and setting up the booth with chairs, tables, the easy up tent and all that stuff, that's a lot of work in itself, all right? Do some research, plan it out, and I say go for it. If you got any questions, make sure you leave it in the comments. Follow me on Instagram, Big Brando TV. Catch you guys on the next one, man. Yeah.